What are the odds that a DNA matches your father or your grandfather? This is the question that everybody is always wanting to be solved. And there is a wonderful tool out there that a lot of people don't know about. It's called What Are the Odds? And it's on DNA Painter. And I have its creator here, Johnny Pearl, who is going to tell us all about it and walk us through it. Thank you so much, Johnny, for being here. Uh, my pleasure, Amy. Thank you for inviting me. You bet. Well, I. I just want to take a minute and tell people because I have some people that take a look at it and are a little intimidated and they and they think that they can't do this and that is not the case. So we're going to go through the steps that you need to take to use what are the odds and it's going to change your world when you're analyzing your DNA matches. So check this out. We're going to let Johnny walk us through it. Very good. Okay. So I'll give you a little bit of background first. A lot of us obviously take a DNA test in order to try and solve family mysteries, right? But also a lot of us struggle with that because it's extremely complicated, isn't it? You, it is, uh, yes. The matches come in and if you're a genealogist you don't necessarily know about DNA, you're, you've got lots of new words and terms to learn yeah. uh, and it can be, be really overwhelming, um, particularly again with that, that new language of the DNA matches. So. The goal of my new tool is, is the, the What Are The Odds Plus is to try and make it easier to understand, to make it simple. So the original What Are The Odds came out in 2017 and it's been very popular, it has a great reputation, but if you have a, yeah, it, it's complicated. I, it doesn't have the very best user interface and if the problem that you have is not just an unknown parent but maybe an unknown grandparent or great grandparent, it was, tricky to use I will admit that as a person who developed it so what I did was I tried to learn over a period of actually four or five years of uh, being an administrator of the of the Facebook user group for what are the odds I tried to learn which parts of it were tripping people up the most uh, and then put those into the new version and also had some nice little innovations as well okay I love the new version I am so excited because I think it's really gonna be so much easier for people and you're gonna get lots of praise I really hope so I mean I don't need the praise I just want people to <laughs> I want people to succeed in there in solving their problems you know so I'll talk you through an example a map I've got David okay. uh, he's a man who has an unknown grandfather so his mother Kathy was born in 1944 and she knows who her mother was uh, Annie Mercer but the the father of, of Kathy was unknown so he has to do something first. He, he takes a DNA test, his mother is not able to test. And the job he has to do is he has to figure out which of his DNA matches come from that unknown grandparent. And it's slightly overwhelming to do that, but it is actually just a process you have to follow. Uh, there is a, a genealogist called Dana Leeds, who she came up with a very simple methodology, which I think has helped a lot of people accomplish what initially feels like quite a forbidding task. Yes. So it's really about uh, taking your biggest matches and looking at the shared matches and then color coding each group of shared matches. And if you're lucky, you end up with these four distinct groups mm -hmm. and you can loosely start to attribute those to different grandparents. So unless you're very unlucky and you don't have too many matches, you hopefully have at least a good suspicion of which of your, ma your matches might be to do with this unknown person. So in David's case, he has succeeded in doing this. He's researched his matches. Uh, he's got two big matches, who I'm showing in my presentation, many for reasons of space. Really, you want to have as many matches as possible. But two right. is okay if that's what you have. And for these two matches, he's figured out who their common ancestor is. There's a kind of a, great, a grandparent to one, a grandparent couple, and a great grandparent couple for the other one. Those are their common ancestors. So now he has a tree, and because of his genetic link to these people, he knows that that tree actually also connects to his tree. He just doesn't know how yet. Where? So that's yeah. what this is for. Right. Okay. So I just want to run through what you need in order to do this. If you, if you jump in and you don't have everything you need, you could get dispirited, so I just want to be really clear about it. First thing you need is something that probably most people who are curious about this already have. You need someone where they have an unknown parent. It, it doesn't have to be you, it doesn't even have to be your mother or father, it could be someone further back in your tree, perhaps even a great-grandparent. Uh, you need their name and you also need the year that they were born. Okay. Okay? So in David's case, he can, uh, it also asks you to specify whether it's just any parent or is it the mother or specifically the father okay. that you're missing. And it'll become clear later on why I'm collecting that information. Okay. So David would enter that he's looking for the biological father of his mother, Kathy. 
and he'd confirmed that she was born in the year 1944. And then the key thing, he says that he, he's not using Kathy's DNA matches because she can't test. He can specify that he's using the DNA matches of Kathy's child and he can enter his own name, David. Okay? And then the last thing he needs is this thing. It's very easy for me to say, but it's harder to do. He <laughs> needs this tree that connects the relevant DNA matches. I can't do that for you with code. You have to use your skills to do it. But, I mean, it's a puzzle. We like puzzles, don't we? We're genealogists. It's a good thing. <laughs> it's true. But uh, and, and you, you're motivated to do this. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. going to break through a brick wall if you can do it. So he has this tree. Uh, for the best results, try and import it from a, a JEDCOM file, which you could export from almost any family history software if you were doing it on a website. The only reason I say that is because that will have the genders of the people. So it will say the sex of it's a, a man or a woman and it will say the birth year. So okay. this is really important information. You can do it manually, there's a quite a user-friendly interface to do that, but then you have to put in that information if you want to get the best results out of it. So if you make the tree, you, you want to research it properly, you want to make sure these people are in the right place, because that's going to affect the outcome. Try and get as many birth and death years in as possible, because obviously if someone was deceased, they, they can't have been the unknown parent. <laughs> And if someone wasn't old enough, they can't have been the unknown parent. So if you give the tool this information, it can use it. If you don't give it that information, then it's going to guess. And it might make stupid guesses. So, yeah, the That's more information point. you give it, the better. So one of the things that he said that I want to make sure you understood, you need to build your tree of all of your DNA matches. And make sure you're finding your matches and you're putting them into that tree and then you're going to export that JEDCOM file, all right? I want to make sure that you understood that part. All right, so now what do we do now that we have that? So now he's got his JEDCOM file, he can actually just import that straight into the tool. So he would browse for that file, then he has to select the common ancestors that he's identified earlier for these, this batch of matches, and then it's going to import it. It looks a little bit like this. Next up, he needs to enter the number of centimorgans of DNA that he shares with each of those matches. This is obviously key information for, for the tool. So in this example, we have one match where he shares 327 centimorgans, and we have another example where it's 449 centimorgans. So he has to make sure he adds those into the right people, uh, and then it's going to look a little bit like this. And then we have this, this uh, magical button, Amy, <laughs> suggest hypotheses. And this button does work much better in the new version of the tool. Because you've given it all this information, it can suggest generally quite sensible hypotheses. So you, you click that button, and what it's going to do is it's going to try out all the people in the tree as a father. So obviously, if, in this case, it's a father, in my example. So if it finds someone who's female, then it, it won't, it, it'll say, OK, well, so it wasn't them. If it finds someone who was born too early or too late, it won't use them. And it will also add people in by default. So it'll say, OK, well, if an unknown child was a half-sibling to these people, that person could have been the father, for example. So that's important that you're at least considering all the possibilities, and yes. I'll talk about that some more later. OK. So after you do that, it will go into the tree, and it will... Um, it's hard to explain simply what it does, but I'm going to try. <laughs> it, it calculates what the, the relationship between the DNA tester and the match would be, for each of those potential fathers in this example. And then it takes the amount of DNA that this person shares with the match, and then it calculates a probability that that, that amount works right. for that relationship. So there's a lot of heavy lifting that you don't have to do because this is doing Thank it you. for you. Yeah? <laughs> uh, so that's good. Now for this first example, I've actually said, no, don't create any new people, but you actually probably should let it create new people because okay. otherwise, there could be possibilities that you're not considering. Now, if you find no, no, I know there were no other siblings there, there's nothing wrong with deleting it, but I'd recommend starting out by letting it add new people. And you can also check another box to say, actually, you can add new people even beyond uh, the, the root people in the couple, so more distant relatives, even. If, if they would work, then it will add them in if you check that box. Okay, that's good um, to know. Yeah. And so what you then get, which is also different from the original What Are The Odds, is you get a percentage, so you get a relative probability. And what that means is of all the hypotheses that are in the tree, this is the relative probability that that one is correct. Okay. And this is a bit of an upgrade on what we had before, because before we had numbers, and these are derived from exactly those numbers, but if you're playing around with different options, adding new matches, you can't yeah. compare it. Whereas with this, uh, because it's a relative probability, 
We'll see later how you can modify it. It helps you see what difference, what impact matches other hypotheses, removing them or adding them, or some other parameters that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. It helps you see how, how those make a difference. Okay. Okay? So, <laughs> these are those other probabilities. We have age-based probabilities. So this is on top of the DNA relationship probabilities. My big innovation in this version is it will consider how old the potential parent was when the child was born. You have to say if you're looking for a mother or a father if you want to use this, and that's, okay, of that's course, good. because the statistics are sex-specific. And where did the statistics come from that allowed you to do this? Okay, so I, I, just, I, I honestly, I looked for, for years, but obviously not hard enough. But then when it really came to building this tool, I thought I have to find something now. And it turns out that actually, as I think part of the Census Bureau in the US, the, the US Vital Statistics Report, which has been published almost every year since the 1930s, I think 1936, they publish these tables and the tables have the total number of births for men of different age ranges or, or women of a different age range, have mothers and fathers separately. Uh, and I was able to, to then put those together into you know, relative likelihoods that I could use in the tool. So I think where this could help people the most is if you have a number of candidates and they maybe have quite a similar chance or probability based on the DNA amounts, this can help you potentially distinguish between them and see which one was most likely. So, for example, if one brother was 42 and the other brother was 33, actually in the US or wherever you were at that time, what was the likelihood that a father was that age? And this is you know, based on real numbers. Obviously, not every single birth was probably reported, but then it gives you a great guideline. And, and obviously sometimes parents are not a typical age that they would be. This is just probability. Yeah. But it helps you narrow that down, which I okay. think is, is a useful feature. And then you can actually take it further. If you know the birth year of the other known biological parent, you can add that as well. So for example, if David actually knows that Kathy's mother was born in 1922, you can add that into the tool as well, and you can check a box and also consider that. And then if you do that, there'll be different statistics, which are only, actually only available for a couple of years at the moment. 1945 and 1960 is all I've got so far, but there will be more for some countries. That will give you the probability of the age of the mother or father based on the age of the other parents. So it's even more precise. So if the mother so was cool. if the mother was 20, it's, it's obviously going to be much more feasible that the father might have been 17 or 18, but if the mother was 40, it's, there's much less of a likelihood that the father could have been that young. Just to give you one example. Yeah. Uh, now, we're getting into the weeds a little bit when we're talking about these ages, and maybe I've lost you, but I don't want to lose you. And the reason why, the reason why this is important is sometimes when you're kind of struggling with trying to figure these out, these are just one more layer of assurances that maybe you're on the right track. If this is like kind of confusing to you, don't worry about it. You don't need to click the boxes. You don't need to worry about it. Play with the tool and you'll start to understand it. I promise. I know that from my own experience. So let's keep talking about, about how this all yeah, works. Yeah, no worries. So yeah, in, here we can actually see on screen the impact that checking that box has had. It's made it even more likely that this one brother, Harry Harrington, was actually the parent. That's because he's 10 years younger than his sibling and based on the mother age, a father aged 33 is much more likely than a, than a father aged 43. So exciting. It's quite cool. It is. 96%. So, does that mean 96% we've got our guy? And the answer is, I mean, yes and no. It, yeah. it, 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 look, it looks promising, doesn't it? But there's a few things you need to look out for. That's the relative probability, right? Right. So it's only really meaningful if you've considered every possibility. And that is what that suggest button is for, but you, you need to use it. So yeah, my first, <laughs> my first, uh, the first recommendation I have to make sure you're on the right track is to use that button, to suggest hypotheses, okay. have the tool explore all the possibilities for you, just to make sure you're not forgetting any. And if you think that some of the things it suggests definitely didn't happen, you can delete them individually. You just delete the person or remove the hypothesis, gone, okay? The second thing to take on board is that the more data you have, the better, right? Yes. Yeah. And in fact, the tool actually calls it out. If you've got a good probability, but actually there's a line that isn't tested, it will tell you, and we have that in our example. We have 96% that this guy, Harry, was the father, but it's actually noted that in fact, 
you don't have any descend any descendants of the other brother tested. So, oh, so that's going to so, mess it up. A well, little. it could mess it up if, if if a descendant of Thomas did test, they could share 600 centimorgans with you or something. If that was the case, this 96 to two percent thing that's that's out the window it completely changes the dna probabilities so unless you're cons considering everything and you've got as much data as is gettable uh, you know you could still be led down the wrong track so the tool is trying to help you not to make any mistakes and it calls that out it says test some more people particularly on this line test some more people and the final thing i want to recommend is that also use your head <laughs> this is yes. a tool yes if you were to discover that in spite of the fact that Kathy was born in Chicago, uh, Harry was actually on the other side of the world, locked in a box, then guess what? He, it's not Harry. He's not her father. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, you have to remember that this is not you know, the answer to yeah. everything. It's going to guide you in the right direction, but your brain is also going to guide you in the right direction. I love that. Okay. I love this tool and I really wanted to do this video because I want people to use it. There's so many people that are trying to identify DNA matches, whether they be adopted or they have, they find out that their father isn't who they thought it was, or they have a brick wall that they're trying to overcome. If you're not using this Watto tool, what are the odds? You're really missing out. So thank you so much for giving us the overview and helping Pleasure. us see that it's easy and, and it's doable. And I really do appreciate you coming. Thank you, my pleasure, thanks for having me. If you want help with sorting your DNA matches, you might want to check out this video because I run through it with you. Step by step, how to sort those DNA matches. Hope it's helpful, have a good day.